Welcome back to our video tutorial series where we're learning how to create tables using HTML and styling them up using a bit of CSS. In the first video we got as far as this, um, where we've got the HTML section done in our table. What we're working towards in this video is this. So we're going to make it look a lot better than what it currently does. Okay, so to get started on um, styling this web page up, you'll need to head over to your HTML editor. You should have your HTML document still open. And we're going to make another new file here. Before we type anything, we're going to save it. So go to File and Save As. And we're going to go into our number three tables folder that we've already created. And we're just going to call this document style.css. So we're making our style sheet. And make sure you've got that extension.css on the end. So the computer knows you're making a cascading style sheet. Um, now before we start typing here, I'm going to go back to my index page and link these two documents together. I want the index page and the style sheet talking to one another. So in the index page, up in the head section here, just go beneath the title, and we're going to put in a link tag. We're going to write rel equals, and then in quotation marks, style sheet. And then href basically means where is this style sheet saved. So we're going to write equals. And you should from should see in your drop down list style.css if everything's saved correctly. You can close that tag off and save it. And that now has both the HTML and the CSS document talking to each other. So over in the style sheet now, we can start styling up our web page. Now I'm going to start by styling up the, the body section of our web page, so the main part of our web page. If we go back to the index page here for a moment. Everything inside the body tags is what I want to style up first of all. So that's basically the entire table. Okay, so first thing we're going to do in the style sheet is write the word body. That's the tag we want to style up. On the next line, I'm going to open up some curly brackets. And I'm going to put in a background image first of all. So I'm going to write in background dash image. And a column will come up. And you need to go down to the URL option. Okay, and from the URL option, where is this background image saved? Now, if you remember correctly from the previous video, we saved it in this images folder. There it is there. It's called wallpaper.jpg. So I'm going to click on images, and I'm going to click on wallpaper.jpg. And that is now put a background image into our website. Uh, I'm just going to put a semicolon at the end of that line to say we're finished with it. If I press Control S to save that style sheet, we can go over here and refresh our page and see we've got a background image in. Looks quite ugly at the moment, but we'll style it up to make it look a bit better. So once that background image is in, I'm going to change the background size. So I'm just going to write background dash size, and I'm going to set it to a cover. Put a semicolon to finish that off. Now if you save it and test it again, you'll see that this line here where the image finishes and then starts repeating itself will disappear. It will expand itself out so it fills up the entire page and it looks a bit more complete that way. It doesn't look like a jagged old website with multiple images cut and paste in the background. Just one nice big wallpaper. Okay, so that background as a cover looks quite nice. Next thing I'm going to change is the font family. This is stuff we usually do anyway, um, so you should be familiar with this. And we're going to choose Sans Serif as the font family for this web page. Uh, the line height is the next thing we need to change. Actually, not the line height, that's going to come next. We want to change the font size first of all. So the font dash size should be 1EM, so just the standard size. And then we change the line height to 1.5EM. So that's basically saying 1.5 or 1.5 line spacing. If we save that up, Control S and refresh it, it's going to be hard to see, but your font will have changed there. We've now got the sans serif font, so the font that does not have the little caps or the curly bits on the end. Uh, we've got the standard size, which hasn't really changed anything. We've got a little bit of line spacing as well between each line there. So that's the body section styled up. Next thing I want to style up is the table section. So back in the index page here, everything inside the table tags is what we're going to style up next. Okay, so I'm going to write the word table and then open up some curly brackets. And I'm going to set the width of our table, first of all, to 80% of our page. Okay, so it's not, I'm not going to fill up the entire width of our page. So if I refresh that, you can see now I've got a table that fills up 80% of our page. 
Also with this table, I want it centered on the page. So the way we do that is you write margin and we set that margin to zero and then write auto after it. And if we have a look now, that should just nudge our table across now to the center of the page. So that text is in the center of the page. All right, so that's all I need to do for the table. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to actually might be able to I'll just try this on the next one. I'm not sure if it's going to work, but let's let's try it. I want to play with the borders. So if I set the border to one pixel and it's going to be a solid border that's colored black. I just want to see what this does. I'm going to press Control S to save it. I want to see if that comes around. Yeah, it just goes around the entire table. I actually want that black border that you can just see there to go around every cell in the table as well. So we're going to have to remove this line and move it down to its own special section. So we're going to write the word table, but we're also going to write in TH and TD. So now we're styling up three lots of tags, the table tag and everything inside of it, the table heading tags, and the table data tags. And what we're going to do is paste that line back in that I just copied about the border. So now that border, that one pixel border that is a solid border and colored black should go around every cell in my table, including the table headings and all the ones with table data. If I refresh that now, very hard to see, but you can see we've got a border around every cell in our table. It's an ugly one, but it's there. Uh, what I'm going to do to fix that border up is change the border collapse option here. So I'm going to write border collapse and then I'm going to collapse it. And what that will do is get rid of the double lines you can see around the border here and just make it a single line, which looks a lot neater. Okay, I know it is hard to see, um, but hopefully you can see it on your screen okay. All right, so when we do style up three things at once, just make sure you put a comma between the different tags and that applies the same effect to all three of those things. Next thing I'm going to style up is the table header and the table data sections only. Okay, so what we're going to be doing here is putting a bit of padding around each of the cells. I'm going to put in 10 pixels of padding. Oh, shocker here, 10 pixels of padding. If we save that up and refresh it, it will just basically expand that table out and give each cell a little bit of breathing room. So 10 pixels of breathing room around all of the writing. Looks much better already. Um, something else I'll do is put all the text in the center of each box. So text align and then write center the American way. Save that up and we'll test it out and you'll see that all your text is now centered inside of the table. All right, so moving down a bit further, next thing I want to do is just style up the TH section only, so the table heading section. It's going to be a different color to the rest of the um, table. So what I'm going to do is change the background color. Remember to spell color the American way. And the background color I'm going to run with is dark slate gray. Don't forget to put a semicolon at the end for that. And that will change the background color. Then I also want to change the font color. So all you need to write for that is color. Again, spelt the American way. And I'm going to change that to white because I think that'll contrast well with the dark background color that I've just put in. So let's go and check this table header row and see how that's looking. Okay, there we go. So we've got our header row or heading row there looking nice. It's got that dark slate gray background and the white text on top looking good. Uh, now the next bit we're going to style up each of the table rows, so TR tags. Now what I want to do, if we head back and look at this example, each um, or well, every second row is going to be the same color. So what we can do here is we write TR and then put a colon and write nth dash child and write even. I know that sounds a bit weird, but it's basically saying every second row on the even ones are going to have a different background color. So we're going to set the background color of every even row in the table. I'm going to choose pale turquoise. 
and put a semicolon there. Let's just see if that does anything. There we go, so every second row has that pale turquoise color. And then I'm going to do every odd row, so same sort of thing, TR, which stands for table row, and we write nth dash child, and we write odd in brackets this time, because we're going to style up every odd row. And every odd row is going to be light cyan for the background color. So light cyan. Control S to save it and have a look. That's looking much better now. We can start to see all the information in our table. Um, what else can we do? H1. I'm going to try and style up the H1 here with a bit more spacing. So H1. I don't know if we need to do this. Let's have a look at line height 1.5. Let's see if that affects it at all. Gave it a bit more space, not by much, but just a little bit more space around it so that line height helped. Um, and then what I'm going to do now, if I just want to style up this one row, I'm going to have to go back to my HTML, it's back to the index here. And I just want to style up this row here. Okay, so if I want to style up that and not affect anything else, I'm going to have to go into the TD section here, just before the word coal span. And I'm going to have to give this, this row or this data in the row a unique name. So I'm going to write TD and then ID equals and come up with a name for it. I'm just going to call it header because it's basically my header row, my big bold header. You could write whatever you wanted there, you could write um, aeroplane for all I care, it doesn't really matter, but something meaningful helps, so that's why I'm going to write header. So the name of this row is called header now, and I can go to my style sheet and refer to that particular row by simply doing a hashtag and writing header. Okay, so this header section, uh, what I want to do to it is change the background color, so background color. And I'm going to set it to teal and the color to white. So that just changes the text color to white to help it contrast with that teal background. Uh, I'm going to save that up by pressing Control S and I will just give it a run. And there you have it. We have a finished web page with a table in it. Okay, so it was quite tedious, I guess, doing that CSS because we had a lot to style up, but you can. Well, you would have seen from the original HTML that we had, which is just that plain white and black document with ugly looking fonts all squished off in the left hand corner, to what we've got now it looks so much better. Okay, so you can see the importance of CSS or the cascading style sheets in web design as they do make your web pages look so much better. Make sure you've got all that saved. Um, that's all I'm going to show you in this video tutorial. I'll catch you in the next one.